Last time we were with you, our discussion started going this way, and all of a sudden went woo because the conversation came up about which NHL team in Canada is best right now, heading into a new season, whenever that starts. Which NHL team in this country would you think is in best position to compete for a Stanley Cup? Let's dive down that rabbit hole. got seven choices so you got one in seven chance of being right who is the best Canadian <laughs> team in the NHL right now assuming the season starts say January 1st February 1st well I would say that I have six choices really because there's no way Ottawa's in this conversation yeah they've made some you know improvements they have uh, some good draft picks that are coming up the pipe um, uh, I, I think their plan is in place and I think we have to look at this discussion with, you know, the best pieces or the best players or the best lineup on paper, because obviously they're not playing right now. Um, and at the end of the day, I know I'm wearing blue and white, but I still think the Leafs have top to bottom the most talent on paper. I'm not sure they're the best team, though. I'm going to shock the world, perhaps, and say the Edmonton Oilers. And uh, they have some difficulties, but they have arguably two of the best players on the planet and uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, but they still have some issues and every team that we're going to name has issues, whether it's goaltending or defense or toughness or character or scoring, whatever the case is, but I'll go with Edmonton. Oops. Did Rick just say that he was going to shock the world with a team <laughs> that had the two best players in the world? I think did everyone was expecting me to say Toronto. Did I, did I get that? No, but you know, it can't be Toronto because if they somewhere within the first or second round, they're going to have to play Tampa or Boston, which are still better teams than them. Um, I, I, I'm going to shock the world and pick the Vancouver Canucks. I think this is a team that uh, economy wise have put together a real nice club with good goaltending, even though Jacob Markstrom has been shipped, shipped off to Calgary. I think the Demko and, uh, uh, the guy that got, got from Washington, I think provided some solid, uh, goaltending. And I just think overall, they have the best young stars. I think Peterson is, is, is an unbelievable talent. And you put them with some other pieces, which they have put together. So I think bang for the buck. And in considering their division they're in, I think Vancouver have the opportunity to go the longest or at least the farthest to get to the cup. I'd lean towards the Leafs a little bit. Uh, but you, you, that's a, I don't want to lose my balance by leaning there. Because uh, we've seen this happen before. They remind me a lot of that, that uh, the year that they got Lindros. And, and, and uh, I got a feeling they're going to get off to a great start because of the guys they added. Whether, whether uh, you know, they've, they've added on defense, which helps. Uh, for them, though, it's still going to, I still, it still feels like the goaltender has to play really well. And I think that f factors so much into all of these discussions, which is why I think I, I'd uh, wonder about Edmonton a little bit, Rick, that, that uh, whether they're going to have the consistent goaltending, especially in the, in the uh, in the postseason, uh, although that's an awful long, long time away now, um, I wonder if Boston, when you talked about Leafs in the postseason, is going to be who they used to be. I mean, they've lost some 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 key parts. Uh, some of the key uh, other key parts are are a lot older. They're they're probably a bit, bit down to the basically the last run on the Bergeron group. Uh, so it, it might be a little bit different of a postseason there and. I think the Canadians might be a sleeper. Well, let me jump in because I was going to say uh, for the reason I grew up in Toronto, which automatically by default makes me not a Canadians fan. So <laughs> I'm not, uh, I'm not a Canadians booster jumping on this one, but I'll tell you if, if Bobby, you said about, you know, the Canucks and the goaltending and Steve, you talk about the Leafs and the goaltending. If goaltending is the most important position in hockey right now, and I believe it is, especially in the playoffs, how are the Canadians not the group that you would be most comfortable with? Because if Carey Price gets on a flyer, there's nobody better right now. And I think the Canadians are a pretty good team. And I think under Claude Julian, they've showed they play hard, which is also a difference. I, I mean, naturally, the Leafs have way more talent than the Canadians, I believe. But they've shown no evidence they're willing to play as hard as the Canadians have. And until they do that, I don't know how you put them ahead of them. So... Um, so, you know what, I, I, I would say that if I had to pick one that would go furthest, I would pick the Canadians right now, unless Carey Price gets hurt because he is their team by and large. Yeah, and I will admit that, you know, Edmonton out of the seven Canadian teams might have the worst goaltending 
you know, Ottawa's made some improvement with Matt Murray. Vancouver, as Bob mentioned, you know, Themco and uh, or Demco and uh, Holpe. Uh, you know, Calgary, I think, is shorn up their goaltending with Jacob Markstrom. Uh, you know, Winnipeg has, you know, the, the reigning Vesna trophy winner. So goaltending wise, you know, Carey Price is above all of them. Frederick Anderson, I think, is in the middle of that pack, maybe towards the upper end. Uh, but at the end of the day, come playoff time, you know, it's the way you play. And Top to bottom, the Leafs have the best scoring unit. The Oilers have the best power play. The Habs are great five on five. Every team has, you know, an efficiency and a deficiency, but come that best of seven series, whatever the round it is, you know, which team has that extra whatever it is to get past. I, th- I think the Leafs have made some improvements uh, in terms of getting some character and some uh, substance uh, playoff wise with Simmons. And Thornton, certainly, Zach Bogosian coming off a Stanley Cup victory. So they've made some improvements. Whether they're the best yet remains to be seen. Whenever a team adds a lot of new pieces, I think it takes a little bit of time for them yes. to come together. And, and, and also on that point, we're talking about goaltending. I don't think that it's – I don't think we can fairly assess who Frederick Anderson is at this point because I don't think he's ever really had a defense in front of him. It's been him versus everyone else. And so given right. some defensive players – It'll be interesting to see if his game ratchets up and if he can jump into a, a league right near the top of the goalies in Canada, right, you know, right up there with Carey Price. Maybe he can. Maybe we've maybe we're too hard on him because he's never had the opportunity to show what he can do under a proper system. To your Montreal um, discussion there, Scott, I, I, I still I think it's still too much Carey Price when I look at that lineup. I mean, it, it, it's the same story for almost his entire career. If Carey Price gets hot, they can beat people. But the problem is you need to win to win games. You need to score. And that team just does not score enough. And then they've taken Domi and tra- traded him out, which there's been some chemistry problems there as well. But they haven't. They just don't have enough scoring. And I know Gallagher's there, but again, he's that grit grinder guy and they have him on a top line that are going to be expecting to play him on a top line situation. And I don't see him as better than a second liner, quite honestly. I just don't think there's enough high end scoring on that Montreal team to be consistent enough. And to the Maple Leafs. Yeah. You know what? It's funny. You, you go back to 67 when they last won the cup, that was what, 53 years ago. And there was a bunch that they, they, they I, maybe Mr. Milton might remember this. That, was there. that I went that to a game. <laughs> they were they, they were known as the over the hill gang, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. and and you know had guys like Armstrong leading the team. Is that what the Leafs have morphed into? I mean, I, I, where does Joe? I hey, I love Joe Thornton. I respect him. Um, the fact that he's able to still be in shape and love the game, you got to appreciate. But really, when you look at that lineup, at his age and his. For a team that's very quick, he's very slow. Where do, he's no better than a fourth liner, I believe, in the center position. And you got Simmons, who you, you pick him up. Yes, a tougher brand of uh, uh, of hockey player, which the Maple Leafs pretty much need. They do need that toughness. But boy, that guy's got a lot of mileage on his body. I see them with a quick start early in the year, but fading near the end as those older bodies get a little banged up. Yeah, well, the the uh, thing with Thornton, uh, you, you could see a sort of a platoon situation with him and Spezza, couldn't you, as a fourth line guy, sure. and, and keep him rested and second power play, uh, which makes an awful lot of different special teams seem to be more and more and more and more important. Which uh, somebody mentioned earlier about Montreal five on five. Of course, that's been one of their issues too. Is you know special teams can be can be an issue. Um, I, I think the thing that that could come down to this I'd like everybody's opinion on this is it, it may depend on how long the season is and and when it starts so you take a team like Vancouver that's that uh, if the season started today they'd be feel pretty good about themselves I think and 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 uh, they'd, they'd come into this with the uh, with some real robust momentum but if it waits and waits and waits and waits how much of that do you lose um, and I don't know what that does to a team like the Leafs I think because they're so talented they get a good start no matter when it is and and we'll see what attrition over 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 the year does to them. They well, can Steve, afford. The length, they can afford also, some. Yeah, sorry. Steve, also, the length of the season because with those. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, length and when it's, Yeah. If you if it's not an eighty-two game season, but it's a fifty-game season, that's better for Thornton and Spezza and, and Simmons for sure. If you're going into the playoffs, I would think. Yeah, and I think one of the things about the the Leafs too, Scott, is that they they have some depths at at at, at where they're already skilled, so so they could withstand an injury. Some of the other teams can't. There's a there's a couple of uh, obviously on defense in Montreal, 
if whoever gets hurt, they're done. Right. And, and uh, so it, um, it, Leafs can, Leafs could lose Matthews and have uh, over time uh, and still be okay. Is there any disagreement with anyone? Would anyone argue that any team other than Ottawa would be the worst right now? I mean, I think in a few years they won't be, but is there any, anyone who would say that there's a team other than Ottawa that will finish last among the Canadian teams? Who is Winnipeg right now? Well, who are I, they? So, who are they? They are yeah. a goaltender and they are some big time offense. Maybe. Maybe. Line yeah. A or agent has now demanded a trade. That was going to be my question is if we're going to assume that Ottawa right now is still the worst team in Canada. And again, for Ottawa fan, because I don't think there's more than one or two of them out there. Um, your team will be better in a couple of years, but right now the worst, but after that, who would be the second worst? And Steve, you just meant, I, I think Winnipeg is, with Line A wanting out, and I don't know how you trade him because he's got he's going to want a huge contract, and we don't have money in the NHL right now. What happens to that team if he has to stick around and you've got now the mess that's there? I think Winnipeg could be in some trouble this year. I think Winnipeg is a poor man's Maple Leaf. You know, a, a, a top-heavy team with, um, you know, an above-average goalie, a really good goalie, really in Connor really Hellebuyne. Uh, their defense is lacking, although it played – you know, above their heads last year. There's no doubt about it. Um, and, and, you know, they play in a tough conference too. I mean, there, there's some heavyweights in that, in that Western conference, not to say that there isn't in the East, but Winnipeg, I think is a team that's trending in the wrong direction, especially if they get rid of line a, who's still a top talent in this league. He can still score. Scoring is still a premium, but if they trade him for prospects or something other than, you know, help right now, they're not as good a team. That's for sure. I'm, I'm not in love with Calgary either. I think they're kind of trending in the wrong way too. I, and, and it's funny because I look at the team and I think they have a tremendous amount of talent, but I feel like of all the Canadian teams, I feel like they've been over the last maybe three years, I feel like they've been the underachieving team. I mean, with the most talent up front and they can go three lines and you have a guy like Giordano who's in, you know, piloting the back, the, the, the power play and that top line defensive core, yet they don't seem to get the results. And then, you know what, I don't understand, which really was strange to me, was not re-signing Cam Talbot. Here's a guy that he was just brilliant. I mean, he had a, he was, he was quite honestly the backup in the regular season, assumed the starter's role in the playoffs. And boy, he was really, really hot and played some fantastic games against the Dallas Stars, and I guess that would have been the conference uh, semifinals, mm -hmm. and, and and they didn't re-sign the guy, and he wanted to be there, but they opted to for something else. They basically got Markstrom because they had to, and that's at a big ticket at about $6.5 million yeah. per. So and Bob, I, I, I feel like that team's going the wrong way. Let me ask you that question because it's a great point because we are now, everything in the NHL is so much based on the dollar figure with the salary cap. Is Markstrom – twice as good as Cam Talbot, because that's roughly what their ticket was. Or would you say maybe he's a little bit better? He might win you two more games a year or three more games a year, but is that worth the three million roughly dollars extra under the salary cap that you could have gone and got another player? I would argue no. I would have gone with Talbot for a few more years. Especially with what you can get for three million right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, the players are, are underpaid, especially those that are still going to be sitting out there are going to be underpaid. Markstrom better be a star. Otherwise, Calgary's in real trouble. The good mm -hmm. news for Calgary is Markstrom is – he's trending in the right direction. He's had three, you know, really good seasons back to back to back, and each of those seasons has been better than the previous. And I think there comes a point in a franchise, especially with the goalie, when you get a guy that you know is going to play – you know, if it's an 82-game season, he's going to play 60-plus games, and you're not going to worry. And the, and the confidence level of the team is sky high whenever that individual is in net. Uh, you know, you look at Montreal, and Carey Price is in net. You know, that team knows it has a great shot at winning when it's, you know, this coming season, Jake Allen, they should be rushed assured that, you know, they have a pretty decent shot at winning uh, with Calgary, you know, Edmonton's in the same boat with Mike Smith and, and Miko Koskinen, whether it's Calgary and they had, you know, David Riddick and, and Cam Talbot. I don't know if they were quite a hundred percent confident that, yeah, we're, we're going to win this game. But Jacob Markstrom, I think that confidence level gets a boost. Yeah. You know, let's not like good. having a closer, you know, you know, that you, you know, yeah. most of the times you can count on them. So you build the rest of the, your, your situation around that. You just forget about that, right? 
when, when we talk about goals against, let's not also forget here with Edmonton, big, big loss in the fact that Oscar Kleplom is not going to be there yeah. for, for the entire season. So you lose your stud defenseman. That's always been an issue with Edmonton that they've been so top heavy up front and scoring goals that they can't keep allowing so many goals. And with average goaltenders, I think Mike Smith runs hot and cold like, like he just always has. And, and, and the other guy just really hasn't really proven himself at uh, uh, Koskinen, even though they've given him big money too. I, I don't see him as a number one goaltender. So, again, goals against, to me, in Edmonton is going to be a major, major issue. If you're the Edmonton Oilers, and, and look, a, a Ken Holland is a, is a brilliant hockey man. He's, gonna, he's you know, no, there's not many guys better. But when you know what your primary issue has been, which is the back end and goaltending, and there's been so many goalies that have been bouncing around on the market. This was the year when goalies were available for pennies on the dollar. How do you end up with Mike Smith as your answer? When, as you say, Jake Allen, the Canadians got him for basically nothing. And mm-hmm. Holtby, the Canucks got for not all that much. And you, I mean, you could have had all kinds of other options. Is Mike Smith really the best guy the Oilers could have possibly come up with? For your greatest position of need, I uh, that one is to me a head scratcher. Yeah, it is. I was going to say they could have overpaid for Markstrom. They could have traded for Matt Murray. You know, a guy who was available as well. Yeah. There's other guys out there. Yeah, that's the Achilles heel for for the Edmonton Oilers. And I know they picked up Tyson Berry, who's going to replace a little bit of what Clefbaum brought to the table. But yeah, that's a super top heavy team that just tries to outscore you. And come playoff time, they're going to try and do that and use their special teams to do that. And they might have some success. But the original question is, you know, which team has the best shot at winning the cup? And I think come playoff time, if the Oilers get hot and get that hot goalie, I think they got a pretty good shot. Well, here's the other thing. Um, given given the, the economics of everything and given who took on what contracts for, for this year to, you know, to get through the year and that kind of thing, there could be a goaltender available. Uh, even among the people we just mentioned above, there could be, a, 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 let's, let's suppose the Canadians. Uh, look, look like they're not doing well. Does, does is Allen available? Well, not Allen's not gonna probably. Well, maybe a, a guy like that that they could pick up, and also a defenseman. So they, a one of the things they got to do is try and make sure that they've got things that they can deal and and space they can deal. If they get, they're gonna they're good enough to overpower teams as we all think uh, during the regular season. So they're making the playoffs likely, right? So maybe then they uh, as they get down to the deadline, they 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 because there's going to be some available. I mean, that's the, just what the economics of the league and the surplus of players at a certain level are showing. There's going to be some players available at the trade deadline that you can get. I w- just wonder if we could ask about this. Does it make a difference whether there's a bubble for the first month or so? I think, the bigger difference, difference, I, th- I think the bigger difference is if there is an all-Canadian division, some, maybe four of these Canadian teams don't even make the playoffs. Maybe it's mm-hmm. just the top three because the other division in the Eastern Conference – is, is top heavy as well with, you know, teams like Washington and Pittsburgh and the Islanders and, right. and the like, and maybe an all Canadian division only gets three. That's a good point. I, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, again, cost is going to have to play a major, um, you know, reasoning in terms of running a bubble or a, you know, a hub city franchise, hub city setup compared to, I mean, cause look at Vancouver. I, it, it, I mean, people, I mean, I think we always kind of think, well, Vancouver's in Canada. But I mean, the, the the flight from say Vancouver to Toronto costs a lot of money, right? And that's going to be very very expensive for Vancouver to be flying across to Edmonton, and of course even the other teams going west as well too. And however they set this up, um, maybe that's the better option. I mean, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how the the pe- how people are going to feel about Toronto hosting one more time if it is Toronto or even Edmonton. Because it, the word was, I mean, there wasn't a lot to do in Edmonton, you know, in, during that bubble for a lot of those Western Conference teams. But, but it's going to be interesting to see the cost comparison of just having teams play at home against having the bubble. If there's no fans, especially. What do you think? Which Canadian team is going to be, or do you think, is going to be the best team in the NHL this year? We're talking about this based on the idea of an NHL division, which the owner of the Vegas Golden Knights threw out the other day. That being said, which team would you say is in the best position right now? Our Twitter handles are on the screen. You can get them there. They're going to come up at the end. If you miss them, you can see them there as well. We would love to hear your comments. Subscribe down below. Catch all these videos. We will talk to you again really soon. 